See You Now is a podcast highlighting the innovative and human-centered solutions that nurses are coming up with to solve for today's most challenging healthcare problems. Created in collaboration with Johnson & Johnson and the American Nurses Association and hosted by nurse economist and health tech specialist, Shauna Butler. Making is a tool set and it's a mindset. The minute I knew this is my life's work was when I had challenged the room full of nurses and said, here's some materials, fix the problem. No idea is too small. And what happened was they started then talking about their own challenges in nursing and then solving it. And I was like, I didn't tell them to do this. Everybody has a different problem to solve and a different solution that they want to create. They just need access to the tools to do it they naturally started talking about EKG patches or patients who needed a diversion to keep their IV in. And nurses are already making. They're already doing this on the unit. And then they just started prototyping them right there on the spot. And I was like, this is it. I have to give them a space to be able to do this work. So that's really how it all started. This is See You Now. I'm Shauna Butler. Welcome to part two of our episode, Making Spaces. Nurses have long been admired and counted upon for their ingenuity, inventiveness, and creative problem solving. We have a rich and entertaining history of rigging up medical equipment and fashioning unique setups that address a person's illness, their situation, and abilities. Nurses are the quintessential do-it-yourself problem solvers, maker nurses, and part of the growing global maker movement of independent inventors, designers, and DIYers who are combining off-the-shelf materials with open source learning, contemporary design, and readily available technology like 3D printers, sensors, and laser cutters. By designating time and creating a space for health making, hospitals and other organizations are empowering nurses to bring forward their ideas, bolstering a stronger, more innovative, and invested workforce. In this two-part episode, we meet a maker and a nurse who are growing the maker movement and community in health. Seeing its impact on the mindset and skill set of health teams and patients and serving as an attraction to and support in building thriving nursing workforces and careers. Hi, my name is Anna Young. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Maker Health. We build the tools that drive experiments to change healthcare. We install maker spaces at the point of care, whether that's a healthcare system or a community or a school, and enable the people closest to the problems, clinicians, to solve them. My name is Rose Hedges, and I'm the Nursing Research and Innovation Coordinator at St. Luke's Hospital in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. I run our medical makerspace that's inside of the main level of our hospital. I help clinicians with providing them the tools and resources to bring their ideas to life. Whether we're prototyping at the point of care or in our innovation lab, we help their ideas to become tangible things that we can use to improve patient care. We saw the impact of the first lab that we installed in Texas that this works and Instead of continuing this as a research project, we want these resources to reach as many people as possible. So that was when we spun out a company from MIT. And while Maker Nurse continues to be the, the driving force and really the, the priority group, Maker Health exists because nurses were the first to point out that this work needs to happen with other professions. This work needs to happen with patients, with caregivers. All parts of the healthcare system benefit from both this mindset of, I can do it, we can solve the problems, and in access to these tools. So Maker Health opened the umbrella, brought everybody in from all different professions, and we've, we've had an exciting opportunity to rethink about what these tools mean in different ways and how to best reach people who need them. So I remember early days in um, the development of Maker Nurse. And the partnerships are hard work. It takes a lot to find the right partner. When you think about the first place that put their hand up and said, yes, it was not the iconic names. Can you share some of the learnings that you had about partnerships and early adopters? Like what's that criteria? What are the things that get in the way of people saying yes? And what are the things 
that make it more likely that people will say yes. When we started, for us, it was a no brainer that, you know, a hospital should have a makerspace, right? <laughs> this, this was 2000. I'm with you, by the way. I'm with you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And I'm, I'm thrilled that we're 2022, and this is actually not a crazy part of conversations, but if we look back on the history of what it meant to, like, somebody had to be first, somebody had to try and be willing to take on the risk to do the experiment that really transforms healthcare. You can't make big change without accepting that this might not work and we need to be okay with that. So when we were looking for partnerships, we were excited to work with hospitals who would jump in and be okay knowing it was a risk, knowing and signing up and saying, yes, absolutely, this is research we should be doing. We should be studying what our nurses want to create. We should be studying what they're doing and how it adds value. And we landed in in the early stages of our work in Houston and sent out a really wide email across the region. And David Marshall was the first one to respond and say, please come. We would love to work with you. He didn't even ask any follow-up questions. And I was like, this is exciting. The mission and goal of that, just supporting and understanding what nurses are doing is enough of a hook for me to want to be a part of that. And so we've continued today. I mean, when Rose shared her story, when she gave nurses the space that they shared, and then She was able to connect those dots to see this is what our system needs to be investing in. This is what our system needs to be doing. Finding those partnerships, whether it's a large institution, whether this is a smaller program, it is having support from leadership and having an invested workforce that wants to contribute to those ideas and and challenges. And we go wherever those ideas are. Healthcare is a team sport. We take care of the same people in the same places who have the exact same problems. And what I love about the maker spaces and much of the innovation engine and libraries that are being built out is you come in and it is, it is a democratized space. You never know where the best idea or the solution is going to come from, whether that's a welder or a data engineer or a pharmacist or um, a seamstress, costume designer, makeup artist, you have no idea. Existing healthcare innovation programs are typically inaccessible to nursing. They're not designed with nursing in mind. And so while they may be open, it may be that it is open to absolutely everybody who has an idea. If the process to reach that idea submission or those resources doesn't consider the workflow of a nurse, the hours a nurse is working, where they're working, the the demands of their schedule, then it's never really open to nursing. So for us, from day one of launching Maker Nurse, that has been the goal of how do you design innovation resources for healthcare systems, whether that is a hospital or community or school, to design those resources so they're accessible to nurses, so they can reach them. So that has never went away. You let every idea in. It's an open access lab. It's an open access program. At the same time, nurses, they're really quick to point out that everybody across the health system is creating or there are opportunities to create for everybody. We also saw that nurses who are partnering with physicians were actually going farther with their ideas. Their ideas move forward. But all of these factors coming together that one, there's opportunities Two, we're seeing interprofessional projects go farther. Maker health exists in order to enable nurses to do the work. And, and it exists with principles that make it accessible, that lower the barriers of entry and that meet nurses where they are so that they can lead innovation programs inside of this bigger cohort, inside of this bigger community as a creator who is a nurse. Rose, I'm curious your philosophy on how do we raise the innovation IQ, raise the innovation confidence and invention confidence as well across our healthcare teams? What do you think we should be doing at all stages of education? As I've watched our culture grow and shift and turn into this think tank of all ideas are important. One thing that's really set us apart is that we have the ability ingrained in our culture now that 
it's okay to bring any idea here or we'll come to you with your idea and we'll work on it and maybe we'll make something or maybe you'll decide that we make something else. And it really, it could be a nurse, it could be a tech, it could really be anyone in the hospital. So as far as what we have in comparison to other innovation programs that are kind of scattered across the United States, one of the things that I make sure that I say is one of the ways that we're different is we are not simply a drop-off station. We're not a room full of engineers, and I, I do like engineers. They're good people. We are a place for education and for designing and prototyping and safely experimenting. But the person that comes with the idea is the person that's then empowered to make their idea come to life, to make a prototype. So that is how we're different. A lot of people will say, well, I have an idea to fix this. That's great. Can you work on it now? Or do you want to come back later? Should I come to the unit? And I think that's kind of what sets us apart as far as the way that we do innovation here at, at our hospital with the help of Maker Health. We're exposers almost. I, giving education is a great thing, but sometimes it's simply exposing a nurse to silicone tape. And they're like, oh my gosh, that would have been so great last week when I thought that my chest tube was leaking and I couldn't get a title. Sometimes it's just exposing them to materials that they didn't know existed before. We're different in that way. Traditionally, through the healthcare professions training and education, we're not introduced to virtual reality. We're not familiar oftentimes with robotics. There are so many different tools and technology that would be in other areas of the university and the training. Mm -hmm. So what are your thoughts about how do we introduce these technologies? And I'm, I'm using a very broad lens, but what I think is really fascinating is to see how nurses are using social media, particularly during the pandemic. So many nurses around the world were, how do we be good stewards of the PPE? How are we setting up our patient rooms? How do we have people coming into our clinics and making sure that people aren't exposed? There were just so many different things. And they were using Instagram, Twitter, they were using TikTok to show, oh, this is how you would set up this for an ICU. This is how you would convert something for a child to an adult. I'm fascinated by that. What are your thoughts about introducing these different tools to use those as part of their toolkit to solve problems? Well, that is certainly a great question. I think that even over the course of the last two years, the culture and the senior leadership teams around healthcare has shifted because if I would have said that I was going to make an Instagram reel on this thing we printed in the lab and we're using it now, there would have probably been these red flags of, uh, we need to talk about that first. And now it's just such common things that are happening in TikTok and Instagram and, you know, all the other social media. So that has definitely shifted, but I really like what you called out as far as how we're sharing our knowledge and we have moved to the social media like platforms. But one of the things that came to mind as you asked that question was, how can we share these ideas across our system that is healthcare, you know, nationally, globally? And it's platforms like these to start the conversations really. And then other nurses just to feel empowered to share those ideas, put it out there on your Instagram, you know? We have this new process that is impacting the way we are able to provide care differently. That's open source. And that's really what we should be doing more of. Rose, as I hear your voice, I hear enthusiasm. I hear commitment. How has the role of having a makerspace and having a culture that wants to address ideas and solve problems and hear and support the, the problem solvers, how has that impacted the well-being, the mindset, the advancement, the problem solving? How does innovation and making and problem solving protect and support our healthcare workforce? So as far as the culture and being able to engage the people working on the front lines in whatever aspect they are, they know that they have the ability to bring any idea and we'll talk about it and maybe we'll make something or we'll help you shift into whatever it is. But part of what is really working for us here and that our leadership has guided us to do is all new nurses come through the lab and we challenge them and we expose them to materials. And what has started to happen since we've done this is now those residents who have 
purposely been exposed to those tools we have available to them are the ones that are stopping by when they came down to get coffee and say, hey, I had an idea. I can't work on it right now, but can I come back? Absolutely. And so we've given them a voice in a different way. So our leadership team has seen that we're not only empowering our clinicians and other healthcare staff to make their ideas and bring them to life, but it's it's starting to turn into a recruitment and kind of a retention tool as well. So when you're pitching this to any of the people that need to fund this, any of the folks that need to see what is my return on this investment, my return on this risk, Mm -hmm. how are you pitching that? What data are you using? What stories are you telling? I can quantify the number of projects that we have saved dollars for. You know, it could be something as simple as creating a new sign for our temporary morgue that might have cost $100 to go to some screen printing company and we made it here in the lab for a dollar. It's all of those things that you can quantify. And if you can pull those out and give them to the people that that is their primary focus, but then when you show them the stories and you talk about this, or maybe you even happen to have them come by for a tour and there's somebody here working on a project and you see the way that they're working and learning with these new um, materials and building this project, or maybe it's the high school kid that comes in that's partnered with us to do a project. And now you're seeing them grow and exposing them to careers that probably don't even exist yet. And those relationships you're building for our healthcare system, people get it. The storytelling is the most powerful, I would say, but there's other quantifiable data that we share. When you think about educating the next workforce, those who are in the degree seeking stages, the entry level degree seeking stages, and those in the current workforce, how do you see Maker Health and all of the projects and initiatives and, and products that you have? How do you see that being instrumental and key in their education? Coming in and being a part of how the future nurses are educated is really critical and important for us because we want to see those nurses inside of hospitals requesting, demanding, and accessing, and just knowing how to get started from day one on how to use a 3D printer, how to use the laser cutter, and why that's a part of, of a wound care program, because you can make your custom customizable devices. Um, so building that in and working with faculty who are excited to, to do this and see, see the need for it is really key. So when you think about creating a culture of innovation, and nurses are already, they're already making, they're already doing this on the unit. No idea is too small. That technology and the transformation that's going to happen at the point of care doesn't necessarily need to be a flashy technology. Devices and solutions made by frontline providers, they're often more affordable, they're more accessible, they're better designed, they're more comfortable because of the lived experience of providing the care and being in the day in and day out. When you make that business case, how do you put safety and elimination of waste as the driver of how you're going to pay for all this? Every makerspace is different and every care facility is different in the, in the portfolio and the ROI of, of waste reduction and, and cost savings looks different because everybody has a different problem to solve and a different solution that they want to create. They just need access to the tools to do it. So it is really about educating that anything can be made and should be made. And then seeing that impact trickle across the system. This is, this is not an extra for what nurse is doing. This is what nurses are doing. And it is making sure that they have the tools and the training to do this in a systematic way, in a scalable way, in a safe way across the hospital systems. Leadership in hospitals recognizes that they need to support the workforce, that that there's there's nobody who will deny that. At the same time, leaders are making this decision while looking at their staffing and saying, I don't even have, I don't have enough people to cover to cover the unit tomorrow. And so the notion of if I don't have enough staff, how am I going to let my existing staff spend time on what looks like, you know, somebody could argue a distraction. It's not nursing. But really the visionary leaders are going to see that if we don't create these opportunities to support and advance the teams that are at the point of care, the teams that are burning out, if we don't invest 
in them, they're going to continue leaving and they will find ways to do creative, impactful work that is outside of the point of care. So really what leadership needs to recognize is, is the moment to invest in and provide resources to support the development of frontline teams is today. Tomorrow's too late. I want to answer that with one word that's been mulling in my head this last couple of minutes, productivity. I haven't met a nurse yet that comes and wants to leave nursing because they created a device. I think it'll be three years this fall that we've been open. So I haven't, I haven't met that nurse yet. A lot of the people that I work with are the people that want to change the way we provide care. And so they want to come and work on their project and they want to get back out there and be a nurse. And a lot of what they're doing has to do with saving time or the productivity they're able to do on their unit and the words productivity alone like if we can save even 10 minutes of a nurse's time when she's out there on the unit that's going to be great or when he's in a supply room that he's not familiar with how can we improve the speed of that time are there projects we can do there so i think that a lot of that goes for me specifically for those questions on how are we going to allow clinicians to come down and work on a space we can come to you or maybe it's the project actually in the long run helps you because their productivity has improved because you've enabled them to make something to make their workflows better and anna earlier on you had mentioned that the pathway for innovation work that while it's available oftentimes it doesn't meet the way nurses work, their schedules, the responsibilities that they have. What are some of the critical issues to make sure that when you put this in place, we're not asking nurses to do this on their off time, you know, in their personal time? How do we prioritize, protect, value, and fund the gathering of not only nursing insights, but then their time to work on and to solve problems? There are a couple of different ways that this becomes sustainable and accessible to nurses, even when their, you know, their schedules don't seem to have a spare second (laughs) or allow for it. And some of that is very tactical. So working and having management of the units on board and budgeting in hours of time that will be dedicated to projects inside of the makerspace. So knowing that there's a pool and a bank of, of hours and of covered time where this is your job you are getting paid to, to go and to do this goes a really long way. Another strategy is 15 minute prototyping sprints. So building that into the natural workflow and knowing that this isn't going to be a deep dive prototyping session, but I'm going to go stop down to pick up my 3d printed part, have a quick brainstorming conversation with the fabrication fellow and with the clinician champion and advance my idea and move that forward. Another strategy is building this work into the professional development ladder of clinicians. So when you create a project, when you've tested this on the unit, you have a poster to demonstrate the impact of what you've done, a pay race moving up. That is part of your your review is is these projects. It's not a, a fun extracurricular, you know, it's you know, to get academic reference, this is the class. This is part of how you get your degree. And, and so I think building, there's not a one size fits all, but there are different strategies that make this sustainable for a workforce. So do you have schools of pharmacy, medical schools, nursing schools? Do you see them using um, Maker Health as part of their curriculum? Yes. Uh, So in a number of different ways. So whether this is um, running a clinical lab, so being able to host a session where you're introducing prototyping and what that does is gives the permission and shows, you know, bridges the, and says like, this is, this is not unique. This is not a, a nursing and engineering. This is nurse making, like this is nurses creating and learning those skills to be, to be innovators, to be partners with, with technical teams. Um, So they're running those labs and letting nurses drive projects. I mean, one of the early partnerships that we had with Rose was actually with her DNP program and being able to introduce, you know, this as a mindset and skill set to nurses. Anna, you've been working on this for so long, and I'm sure that you've met your plenty of people who told you this will never work, or this is a crazy idea. What are some of the things that were really helpful to you that 
you heard that you would encourage other people, make sure that this is part of your uh, response repertoire. What, what do people need to hear when they come to you with, a, with an idea? Who knows if it's good or not? Who knows if it's going to work? But when somebody comes to you with an idea, what do they need to hear? Let's try. We're jumping into an experiment, the agreement that in the let's, right? They're not alone, but us. It's you have somebody who you're going to partner and work with on this. We have a really great nurse who is in the Maker Health Academy program, Jordan Rice from Houston, Texas. So young clinical research nurse. She has notebooks of ideas of things in over the two years in her nursing career that she's been wanting to work on. And she joined, joined us to work on one specific for, she's like, I don't quite know the number of patients this would impact, but it's every patient that I see that has this specific condition needs it. So regardless of asking her, well, let's build, let's build the case for exactly how many, before we think about investing the time in it, it's going to impact somebody let's do it. And it's been amazing to see how, how her personal journey is, is evolving and how she thinks about it's just, you know, it's second nature to her now, this notion of, well, let me, let me just brainstorm with my patients at the end of our session right now about, about what they think about how I could best better create this dressing for them to, she actually had her patients show her the 3d printed holder that they had made in order to hold the pump. You know, I mentioned that by building a prototyping literacy, nurses become like stronger collaborators with engineers become stronger collaborators with their patients because she knew and could see the potential of that device. And so now that's on a trajectory of how do we share this with more people and make sure that more patients know it. So it's, um, you know, building that mindset, building that experimentation culture that is really going to transform nurses today. Yeah. And it's not only the words, oftentimes it's, it's the energy or the emotion it's it's Absolutely. you know what does the body language is like yeah i mean there's enthusiasm mm -hmm. there and it, mm -hmm. and it helps to build people's confidence and feeling safe to say oh i just had this idea i mean when people throw a cold bucket of water on it what's the likelihood that they're going to come back the next time mm -hmm. with an idea and so while you might not be the one with the idea or driving the innovation everybody has a role um, everybody can support problem solving. I never was met when I when I came with the big idea of I want to open a space. I want to do um, you know prototyping labs. I was never met with that. Oh, we can't do that right now, or we don't have the time, or the, you know whatever it was. It was always the tell me more about it. Tell me more about it. Let's explore this. And it was never immediately shut down. And I think that's what just kept my spark going. Maker Health, what we think about some of the pillars of why this work is important and why it matters is change doesn't happen unless you can do an experiment. So how do we support more experiments inside of healthcare? How do we educate clinicians on the different pathways that their projects can take? So whether this is you've created a solution and is this a commercial device? Is this an open access protocol? Is this a publication? Knowing that there is not a one size fits all for something that that you can create can be incredibly powerful and liberating that uh, of lowers the barrier to what ideas can be created and creates that open culture where any problem solving is worth creating. Anna Young is CEO and co-founder of Maker Health, the parent organization of the Maker Nurse Program. And at St. Luke's Hospital in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, Nurse Rose Hedges is Nursing Research and Innovation Coordinator and Manager of Generate at Unity Point Health, an open access, hands-on medical technology and learning lab where hospital employees and patients have access to world-class tools and talent for point of care, rapid prototyping. In 2019, the World Health Organization classified burnout as an occupational phenomenon. While workplace burnout isn't new, it's become far more prevalent and dire in healthcare occupations in the wake of the last few years. And the call to action is clear. We need to do better for our healthcare workforces, creating workplaces and cultures where team members thrive, feel empowered, seen, and autonomous is crucial. And innovation can play a powerful role in doing so. However, 
Innovation work in health systems typically sits with a small group as part of corporate strategy and vision, rather than pervasively embedded in practice, culture, and problem solving. As Anna shares, existing healthcare innovation programs are typically inaccessible to nurses. They're not designed with nursing in mind. She then asks, with great enthusiasm, what would healthcare look like if anyone and everyone had access to the tools and support to solve the problems they're seeing? With the complexity and acuity of care continually increasing, the need for point-of-care problem solving grows in importance and urgency. Nurses and health teams need solutions that work. They need them now, and they are frequently the right person in the best position to bring that solution to life. When health systems adopt a maker mindset, as Rose shares, the person who shows up with the idea is the person that's then empowered and equipped to bring it to life. Over the years, introducing and building maker mindsets and spaces, Anna has identified and written about three critical characteristics healthcare leaders have embraced in their successful pursuit of a thriving maker health culture. First, dedicated hours to pursue innovation projects built into job descriptions and responsibilities. Second, a suite of tools, materials, and training to bring ideas to life. And third, leadership who recognizes and rewards innovative nurses who celebrate and brag loudly about the value and impact of their projects to the broader community. As new healthcare challenges arise around the world, empowering the people and teams tackling those challenges is more important than ever. And as Rose says, she has yet to meet a nurse who wants to leave nursing because they created a device or solved a problem. For See You Now, I'm Shauna Butler. Be sure to check out part one to get the full Making Spaces story. And thanks for listening. Nurses are transforming healthcare through innovation, compassion, and leadership. And Johnson & Johnson is proud to continue its 125-year commitment to champion nurses through recognition, skill building, leadership development, and more. The American Nurses Association is dedicated to building a culture of innovation. Nurses improve the lives of patients and communities through innovative thinking, empathetic connection, scientific rigor, and sheer determination. ANA is proud to support and advocate for our nation's most valuable healthcare resource, our nurses. For more information on See You Now and to listen to any of the earlier episodes in our library, visit seeyounowpodcast.com.